Hi guys, welcome back to Byte Review. In my day job, I am a teacher and last year I came to the conclusion when I reviewed the iPad Pro that it couldn't really replace my laptop for everyday use. But a lot has changed since then. We've had the release of iPad OS and I was so interested in it, I actually opted into the beta. So I've been using it for a while now and I think it's about time I gave you an update on what's on my iPad Pro and how I use it as a teacher. Let's talk about the actual iPad setup first because that has changed a little bit since last year. I'm still using the iPad Pro 11 inch with the 64 gigabytes of storage. I've still got the Apple Pencil, which I really do think is worth getting. Attached to the iPad is this kind of relatively cheap folio case, which obviously helps to stand it up too. The other thing I picked up was this Logitech Keys to Go keyboard which has been really fantastic. It's really small and it looks just about right on the iPad Pro and I got it pre-owned for about 20 pounds, which is a lot cheaper than Apple's 180 pounds for their smart keyboard. And I really do think a keyboard is worth picking up if you're going to use an iPad Pro as your main computing device because it really does change the way you use it and it turns it into a much more of a laptop slash desktop replacement, if you will. Anyway, let's get into the apps. So this is generally speaking how I have my iPad set up. On the left here we have uh, widgets that I use quite a lot which are useful and along the top line are just some kind of classic apps that I don't really need to go into. Calendar, clock, photos and camera, everyone knows those and how to use them. YouTube Studio is where I can check up on videos and see how they're doing and YouTube is obviously just there to watch YouTube when I'm fancying it. The second row is where things get a little bit more interesting. The place where I work has recently moved over to Google and the G Suite for pretty much everything. And because of that, all of my lessons now pretty much revolve around this one app, which is called Google Classroom. Classroom is a really amazing tool for lessons and the best way for me to describe it is almost like a private Facebook group that's dedicated to everything you'd ever need really in a classroom. I've got an example one set up here so you can see it. But effectively, what you can do is you can post assignments to students, announcements for the entire class, questions to be answered, resources to look at, and pretty much everything in between. I can't really remember a point now where I'm not like, hey, go and check the classroom for more information. Your students can also comment on things you post, which is quite nice. So if they've got a direct question, you can answer them nice and easily just behind them. Um, and it gives you that direct line between you and the student, which just makes things quite nice. Using this one in the middle of the classwork tab, you can actually set all of your things in here. So assignment, question material, and reuse post. These are all really, really useful, and they pop up in the stream here on the left. There's a great hand-in function for students as well. Um, when you set an assignment with a deadline, students can allow Google to add it to their phone calendar too, which is actually really, really nice. One of the best things about Classroom though is how well it ties into the rest of the G Suite. Students use Google Docs, Slides and Sheets and a bit of Sites as well to get all of their work done. And the real blessings of this is there's complete accountability for all of it. As it's all online, they have no excuse not to have their work on them. So they can't use age old excuses like I left it at home or it's on my memory stick and I've lost it. Google is like completely cloud based. So all of their work just follows them everywhere. It also crosses economic factors too, because it's obviously all internet based. All they need is access to the internet to get on with their work. There's no, oh, I don't have that app at home or anything like that, which is really useful. And there's great mobile apps too. So for students who don't have access to like a traditional laptop or computer at home, can work on their personal devices like phones, tablets, or even Chromebooks, of course. So that takes us out of Classroom. I use Slides and Docs to help prepare lessons and that's all backed up in Google Drive as well, which is really useful. Slides on here is pretty fantastic. I can make these at my leisure and then present them on the computer later on at any point. And the best thing about all of it is I just don't have to transfer anything. It's just all here, all ready to go all the time which is just really, really nice. I don't have to worry massively about where I'm gonna get it from or have I got to upload it to a memory stick or make sure I've got access to it. Wherever I log in, it's gonna be there and I can present them nice and easily. Google Docs is obviously where I do all of my stuff in terms of writing up, marking, all those sorts of bits. Um, I do also use it for everything Byte Review. So if I go into, oh, here we go. Uh, what's on my iPad Pro, this is kind of the notes I've typed up about it. I can do that on here or on the computer or anything and it just updates all the time, which is really nice. And um, that takes us out of there. On the right here, there are a few more things which are kind of like remnants of the past. I still have to use Microsoft Word very occasionally if something doesn't really support uh, the G Suite or if I have to load up something that's slightly older. 
Slack is for some other businesses that I'm a part of. And Pinterest is something which I really recommend to a lot of students sometimes if they're trying to think of design ideas or trying to piece loads of initial mood boards together, Pinterest can be really good for that. And Sketchbook is like a drawing app as such, which is quite useful. One of the other things as well which has made the iPad a lot more viable recently is the update to Safari to a desktop class browser. One of the things that really bugged me last year when I tried the iPad as a laptop replacement is that Safari just wasn't a desktop class browser, but it is now, which is really great. So I can jump straight into things like Google Sheets or Google Sites or something like that and just use it as you would do normally. Otherwise, I used to find that really frustrating when I, it would prompt me to download the app and I just didn't want to or didn't have time. It's nice that you can do all that on Safari now. So Safari has had a major upgrade and that's made things a lot more easy. While I am a teacher for the most part, um, I am still doing a bit of learning as well. And to organize all of my notes and stuff, I use uh, the Notes app. And I haven't felt the need to buy a different Notes app because Notes on the iPad, I actually think is pretty darn good. Um, there's not a huge amount to say here. I have them set out in folders. So I've got bite reviews, some studying work, some normal work and all those sorts of things are just organized into files um, and I can just use it for that. Notes is really a good place to just jot down ideas. For instance, in bite review stuff, I've got loads of things I need to film, I need to carry on filming and all those sorts of things. And I'll write down ideas of what sort of things I need and all that sort of stuff. For bits of studying, it's just nice to have it all digital so I don't have to carry around a notepad. While I couldn't recommend it over like a piece of paper and pen, because it's obviously a lot more expensive, writing on the iPad with the Apple Pencil is really, really nice. And it's where the pencil really comes into its own. It feels like writing on a normal piece of paper to a point. Apple just do a great job of how it feels and looks. And I really like all of the features you get in here. There's lots of different things you can do about colors and notes and all that sort of stuff. It's really useful and marking up web page and stuff. Notes app, I use quite a lot and it's good stuff. All of these other apps along the bottom aren't really much to tell you about. They're effectively just apps that I use every now and then. Twitter, OneDrive is for my personal stuff. Messages, Reminders of course got a big update in iOS 13. But I must admit I'm not actually a big user of Reminders or at least not yet because I usually write all of my reminders down on the notepad and then I uh, tick them off as I go. Which is a bit silly and I should get into this but I haven't got there yet. Um, I use Trello for all of my video stuff. So any ideas that I've got, I have this video roadmap and it's got all of my ideas in there, all the things that I've done, all the ideas and all those sorts of bits and bobs. And it's just a nice place to keep track of everything. I could use that for work as well, to be honest, but I don't really need this much organization for what I do, but it's good for that. So that tails off these apps along here. Underneath is the more kind of creative apps, if you will. And starting off, I've got Procreate here. Now Procreate, I had this grand idea of when I got the Apple Pencil of like learning to draw and how to do all these like character animations and stuff that I really like. Sorry, character drawings that I really like. Um, but as with many things like that on Impulse, I just never really got massively into it in the end. Although I did enjoy it while I was doing it. Moving on though, and the iPad, which I think it really excels at is definitely photo editing. And the most powerful of those at the moment is certainly Lightroom. And Lightroom is effectively, you can do everything you can in the desktop Lightroom on the mobile Lightroom. It's really, really great. One of the great things about iOS 13 is obviously being able to input SD cards directly into stuff and having a proper file browser and I've actually got a shortcut up here So what I'll do is I'll plug this in so I can show you So once you plugged it in you'd normally have to go to the photos app to import those photos and then bring them into Lightroom But with this shortcuts app over here, the import to Lightroom one I can go straight into my DCIM Go through all of these and then I can just select a bunch of photos that I want or something like that So I'll just pick a couple of these um, Doesn't really matter and just whack open and that will run through the little thing over here and it should boot up Lightroom nice and easily and then my photos should slowly load in here and then you can just go about editing them. One of the great things about editing a photo or doing anything in this Lightroom uh, version is that it appears on everything else you've got it on. So I've got it on my phone, I've got it on my laptop and I've got it on my computer. So anything I edit on the iPad will just pop up in those places as well because it's all cloud synced. Really, really powerful, really, really great really really like that app it's fantastic imaging edge mobile is just like an import photos from my sony camera straight to the ipad which is useful 
and Instagram is obviously Instagram, which still doesn't support going this way around, which is annoying. Visco is another photo editor which I use a lot of. If it's for something I know I don't need to do lots of edits to, or it's usually what I use for my Instagram feed. So if you're a fan of the look I have on Instagram, Visco really is kind of like the, the, the one I use to get all that look. My, my photos usually start something like that, nice and dark, and then I'll use these to really pull them out. I use a collection of the C range, and I think Visco are doing like a subscription basis now. I don't think it's like you can't, I don't think you can buy packs anymore, but usually C2 or C8 give me the look I want, and then I'll go into all of these bits and change it around and make sure I'm happy and all that sort of stuff, which is really, really nice. Um, Visco is one of my all time favorite apps, and I've mentioned it in so many videos before, but it's just fantastic at giving you that look. Um, and it's really good if you don't need to do lots of little edits. If you're trying to correct things like spots on people's faces or little blemishes here and there, it isn't good for that, but it is good for stuff like this, which is all set up and ready to go. Absolutely love it. That's Visco. I've got a few others left in here. Snapseed and Nlight are quite good for just general editing. Unsplash is also a really great website or an app really, I guess on here. Um, and I direct a lot of students to here because it's just really, really great stock photography. Sometimes students will kind of struggle to say things or write them down, so I get them to do it with pictures instead. And this is a place I often direct them to because it's usually wonderful photos and they're always free, which is fantastic. Premiere Rush is a good little editor for being on the move for video and it's really powerful on the iPad. I actually edited a whole video, I'll link that up here, uh, a couple weeks ago, which was all done on Premiere Rush, which is quite good. And Lens Distortions is a good one. Um, I won't go into it now, but it lets you add loads of flares and stuff to your photos and stuff, really, really nice. So that pretty much rounds up my iPad. On the second screen, I do have lots of other little bits and bobs, but they're not massively useful and they're nothing you haven't seen before. So that does round up roughly what I've got on here. Like I said, the mainstays of being a teacher are all of these apps along here, all of the G Suite ones, having the powerful desktop class browser in Safari, and also the files app is just really, really useful for all of these bits. That wraps up this video on the iPad Pro and how I use it for all of my teaching needs. If you've got any app recommendations, I'd love to hear them, so please write them in the comments below and I will give them a go. If you liked the video, pop a like. If you loved it, pop a sub. And also hit the bell, that'd be fantastic. And I will see you all in the next one.